by the way, what what happened to the Buckeyes? What's what's going on? Ohio State in Columbus. Well, there's a few different uh, ways I wanted to take this, so we we can go in that direction uh, to start. Um, yeah, Ohio State uh, not playing defense, not being able to figure things out on defense, getting manhandled up front. You're talking about Michigan dominant up front on defense. Ohio State, that defense made no plays, like no negative plays until very late in the game. And ironically, when they finally started to stop Oregon, the final three drives of the game, that's when the offense stopped after clicking for over 600 yards of total offense so that they couldn't erase the the final touchdown deficit. Uh, That was not a pretty performance. Uh, especially with uh, Oregon missing five key defensive players and one of the best in the nation, Kayvon Thibodeau. Right, yeah. I I mean, what I thought after watching them, watching Ohio State against Minnesota was it doesn't matter if this defense gives up 35 because the offense is going to score 60, right? So I I thought that that was kind of going to be their MO for the year. Um, But obviously, you know, uh, Oregon's defense is better than Minnesota's, but they're still, like you said, they were missing quite a few key people. And so uh, I thought that this offense would would roll more. I mean, I think C.J. Stroud had a fantastic game, but I was very surprised they could not get the run game going because that has been their their key thing, you know, in the past. It is they would, you know, obviously they, they have unbelievable receivers and C.J. Stroud can get it to them, but – they set the tone with with Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams and, and getting that rolling. And, and that's how they gain, you know, that's how they end up scoring a ton of points too. Um, were you surprised at how at what was going on with that offensive line in that run game? So nobody I talked to on here, whether it be a guest or with all the viewer comments, almost no one outside of an Oregon fan thought and even the Oregon fans were conceding defeat like this was this you would have thought Ohio State was playing New Mexico like I didn't run into anybody thinking Oregon would win that was not an Oregon fan and even most of the Oregon fans I got two Oregon uh writers they come on here and they they conceded defeat we just want to keep it close make it look good and and leave town and say hey we we gave the number three team like everybody conceded a loss I thought that 14 points was ridiculous. I snapped that up like that. Didn't even think about it. Now, I'm not going to say that I picked Oregon to win. I did pick Ohio State to win, but I had the feeling that this was a very sh- – I, I cited the number in, in, in several times during the week to say, I'm giving Oregon a 40% chance of winning this game. I think it's almost a 50-50 game, but I'll go 60-40. So I was not surprised – now, to your point, Ohio State rang up the yardage um, even more so than they did against Minnesota. But in situational football, they kept going for it on fourth and fourth and two, fourth and three at the 10 or 15 yard lines, going for touchdowns, seeing that their defense was getting shredded. And that's where they would get stopped. They had no issues uh, um, in terms of moving the football. Yeah, and yeah also were the antithesis, not that this should be a big surprise, of Michigan at this point in terms of their identity. For threw sure. it 54 times, ran it like 12 or 13 times. And it wasn't necessarily that they were ineffective running the ball. They just gave up on it. And I get that to a certain extent. They were down one to two scores pretty much the whole game. It would be two scores, then one, then back to two. And But, but we're talking third quarter, they're giving up on the run. So... Ryan Day spoke to that after the game, and it's it's always odd when you hear a coach talk about, well, we should have run the ball, we should have been committed to the run, we shouldn't given up on the run, and you're like, well, you were there. You, you called. That's your decision, man. I I don't know what to tell you there, um, but yeah, I I looked at the stats afterwards too, and I was like, oh, they must have not been able to run the ball. But then Mayan Williams had an average of five and a half yards of carry, and Travion Henderson had four and a half. Those aren't gigantic numbers but they're not bad numbers so it it was just it looking at the box score afterwards it's weird why they got away from the run and didn't want to continue to do that at at when they were doing it with that kind of success so um you know i i understand cj stroud and you want to get the ball to chris olave and and you know get the ball to to jackson smith and garrett wilson but i mean you you got to start running, start with the run, right? And so um, 
I don't know. I don't think you're going to win very often unless unless C.J. Stroud is throwing for 700 yards on 54 passes. But um, when you're trying to throw the ball 54 times, it doesn't work out well. And what was also impressive about this Oregon defense is that these running backs were basically gaining all that yardage based on blocking. When an Oregon defender hit one of them, they not only tackled them on the spot, they either drove them back or they just stalemated them every time. Uh, it wasn't like they got dragged for another three yards or they needed some help from another dude and, uh, you know, they whiffed or anything like that. They, they were tackling in space. It was impressive. Uh, and Ohio yeah. State's got some major issues on defense. Again, the last three drives of the game, they suddenly woke up and started to get a pass rush and stopped Oregon the last like seven or eight minutes of the game. But before that, nothing could not stop anything. I, I, are you surprised at, at how not good this defense is? You know, I think that they obviously the offense of Ohio State for the past decade has been the strong suit, right? But they're, they've had some really good defenses as well. And that's when they've really been contenders for, you know, college football playoff and the national title. Um, you know, I would be a little concerned if, if I'm an Ohio State fan at what an Alabama could do to this defense, right? Starting in 2017, their defense started to slide. Through 16, through Urban Meyer's tenure, and you can go back before that, but Urban Meyer's tenure, elite defensive play. When, well, when he got there, it wasn't. He fixed it quickly. And then 14, right. 15, 16, they were phenomenal. Okay. Yeah. Of course, they won a national championship in there and were probably the best team in the country in 15. And then they started to slide in 17. And it's not it's difficult to understand because they, they still churn out the NFL draft picks. What's alarming is that the secondary was awful last year. It's still pretty bad. They've had a couple guys, Denzel Burke in particular, step up as a freshman and play really well individually. The linebackers are very marginal, and that's been the case for a couple of years. And they even replaced all of them, and two of them went to the NFL and got drafted. And that surprised some people, thinking, man, they played awful at Ohio State and it, against better competition. It's almost like a Don, Don Brown, Michigan defense kind of narrative they 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 were very productive really good players but then they'd show up against Alabama or Clemson right. and it was like they were a step slow but they hey they got drafted fairly high so they uh that they must be good players talking about uh, Werner and Borland uh but the alarming portion of this is that the defensive front and and I'll add the disclaimer that two of these guys are true freshmen so regardless of what the star rating says you know, give them some time to develop, but they've got three, five stars just on the defensive line and well, no pressure, nothing. That, that was what I was going to ask is, you know, that defense has really been anchored by a Chase Young or a Joey Bosa. And I think people thought that Zach Harrison was going to be that guy. You know, obviously Michigan wanted him really badly. Right. And so he was a high, highly touted recruit and everything, but it, does it seem like they they don't have that guy on that defensive front that can cause chaos um, and and really bring the pressure uh, to to talk about uh, or, or bring the pressure that uh, disrupts everything that an offense wants to do against them? They don't have that guy. Yeah. They don't have anything close to that guy. Now potentially they have three of those guys. <laughs> Again, if you look at the five stars and disclaim two of them, JTT Tuimolo Ao. He just showed up to campus uh, right before uh, August camp. So, of right. course, uh, these guys do need time to develop. And Jack Sawyer is a tremendous five-star. But, uh, again, he's a true freshman. Uh, but Zach Harrison, uh, he made the kind of play against Minnesota that changed the game with a strip sack for a touchdown. Yep. Uh, but it didn't necessarily play to play to play, have the kind of game that the Chase Youngs and the Bosa brothers had in the past consistently. Yeah, it's it's pretty alarming. They've got things to fix, of course. They also have the players to fix it. We'll see if they can figure it out. But I, Garrett Wilson, that guy's open by five yards every time it, they throw it, him the ball. It's really I I mean, I I think CJ Stroud's salad, but I think you could put about anybody back there and throw to Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Yeah. I, oh. I don't understand how quickly or how open these guys are because they're not like running 
crazy routes. They're normal tree routes, normal, uh, they're post routes. And then, but they just make one move and that's it. And it's, it's really incredible. 